Hey folks, I'm back to shoot the uh, fourth and final installment of my Russ and Tory Taft Bell Buckle Weekend uh, series of videos. Um, picking up on Sunday morning, I woke up fairly early. It was, I guess I'm was still used to Louisville time, which is an hour ahead of Bell Buckle. And, um, so I decided to write Russ a letter. The previous day I had met him, well, I would met him before, but we went out, well, we went out to that outdoor the first, the afternoon when we went out there and to the meet and greet. Uh, it just seemed like, you know, there's always so much you want to say when you're, I guess perception is really weird because, you know, I've walked in with his music for over 30 years. So, you know, I feel like here's a chance to, to talk and tell him how much it, his music has meant to me and kind of, but, you know, in a couple minutes, what what can you say? It's always, you always feel like, or at least I feel like, <clears throat> I go to I stumble, almost stumble over what I'm trying to tell him because I'm trying to fit in as much as I can in just a few minutes. So I thought I, I'd write him a letter. And I did, and I talked a little bit about the weekend. And, and, and you know, I'd been dealing a lot thinking about my mom and, and, all of that, and, and also talking about his music and how it's helped me over the years. And so I wrote him this letter, and Dave and I went over to uh, the uh, banquet hall. That's where we were going to have brunch. Brunch was being served to the to the crowd, or to the yeah, to the crowd that came to the to the Bell Buckle Weekend at uh, 11 o'clock, and then we get a concert at uh, 12. The concert at 12 would feature uh, Reba and Donnie McGuire and Mark Lowry, and uh, then Russ would do um, a bunch of uh, songs, more from the back half of his catalog, primarily uh, Gaither stuff. So we got there, got our place. I saw Andrew went over, was talking to him, and the Tafts came in, and I had an opportunity to give Russ the letter. When I did, I just kind of mentioned a little bit about what I was dealing with and and how tough the year had been, and and. Uh, And he, he, you know, there was a, there was a good moment of recognition and he, he actually hugged me. And, um, so from there I went back to the back to, uh, well, one to check on the silent auction, see how that was going. And then I went over to, uh, Reba Rambo and Donnie McGuire's table and they were running two different deals um, on their on their uh, CDs and and vinyl and so I did I did both <laughs> it was a really good deal <laughs> and um, so what did I get well the the CDs uh, there it was a pack of three the first one is is uh, this album, Lord's Prayer. Um, Reba Rambo, Donnie McGuire. Uh, it's all of the music, you know, kind of a plain back. All of the music kind of deals with the with the whole um, well, with the Lord's Prayer. Like great guest vocalist on it as well, like Cynthia Clawson, 
who's a phenomenal singer, uh, B.J. Thomas, uh, Tremaine Hawkins and Walter Hawkins, uh, The Archers, uh, Reba sings on it, and so does Andre Crouch. So, um, this, this album is more pop than, like, that doesn't almost seem like an adequate description, but it's more pop with some soul, maybe some soul influence. Um, which, I guess I should have set this up better, but but when you kind of looking at the Rambo McGuire uh, discography, you know, that's, you get, especially when it's Rambo McGuire, it's probably going to be more popish influenced. Whereas when you uh, get, get uh, some of the Rambo, uh, because her whole family was one of the, her family to uh, Southern Gospel, Country Gospel is kind of what the Carter family is to country music. I mean, they're just, they're giants. Um, her mother, Reba's mother, Dottie, uh, Dottie Rambo was as big as they get. Uh, wrote thousands of great gospel songs. Uh, Maybe the most famous of them all being um, He Looked Beyond My Fault and Saw My Need. Uh, so, which brings me to this this disc. It's just in a little cardboard sleeve, but that's okay. It's a nice picture of the Rambo family. Rambo McGuire, Timeless Classics. Um, great CD all kind well most of the big songs from their from their discography um produced by donnie it's a 2014 recording uh but um great stuff and this has that song uh he looked beyond my fault and saw my need along with uh a great bunch of other ones like I've never been this homesick before I go to the rock there's nothing my God can't do precious Jesus great disc and but that one has more of that that great country sound um, going back more toward the pop side of things um, Rambo McGuire this is just in a white computer sleep but you know what I'll take it <laughs> because it, I think they just released something similar to this um, but this is a limited edition CD it has some great songs on it uh, like, um, oh, a couple of, uh, maybe the video right before I started this series, I showed a Michael English CD called Love is the Golden Rule. And that song is on here because I believe uh, Donnie wrote it. Maybe it might have been. Let me see if I can see the songwriting credit. Um, I know it's on here. It says Donnie. So I don't know if that's the songwriting credit or it just means that he was the only one to sing on it. Um, another great song on here is uh, He Made You On A Good Day. And I guess that one, that one I really appreciated. The whole morning, the, there was a real sense of, of, of from the artist of trying to communicate God's love for for them and I appreciated that because that, that's kind of where I'm at too I mean I, I I mean I get I get my unrighteousness 
I get my need for a savior. You know, I understand if I know my son better than anyone except God, <laughs> you know. So, I get all that. And, and like most people, I think we are all really difficult, really hard on ourselves. Not that that, and we should take that aspect of our, our spiritual nature seriously, but at the same time, what he was saying with the song, He Made You on a Good Day, was that even even in our sinfulness, he still loved us, and he made a way for us, and, you know, he breathed life into us, and, um, and we were... We were worth enough that he would, that Jesus would would be beaten and killed to um, to bring us back to him, and that's that grace is something that eludes me at times. That part I, I struggle with. So I was real appreciative, and and. That, that they talked about that that morning and, and there were some great moments um, okay so that that was the CDs that I bought she also had a deal on her albums which was <laughs> which were really really nice um, so I picked up two of them uh, she was kind enough, to, Reba was kind enough to sign both of them. Uh, the first one, well, hey, Jake, come on in and pull you up a seat, buddy. All right, so this first one is uh, Reba Remembering. And from what I've listened to of it, it's more, it would fall more in the pop category. Um, it is a 1981 recording on Green Tree, which is a Christian label. Um, nothing much to see as far as there's the Green Tree label, actual Green Tree label. It's a label I mostly associate with Dallas Home because I've had a lot of his albums and he was on Green Tree. So I always think of him when I see that label. But again, she, I don't know if you can see it, but she signed it to Dale Reba. Um, the second album I got is uh, Rambo Reunion. So, that's her father, I believe, and I believe his name's Buck. That's her mother, Dottie. That's Reba, and then that's Donnie McGuire. And, of course, you can see the signature on that as well. I have not spun this yet. I would assume that it would be more in the country uh, category, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, but I don't see how... It, <laughs> I, I don't see Dottie singing on a pop album. Okay, and then... This did not come in the album. I just stuck it in there to keep it nice. Uh, Rambo McGuire, I guess this is the band more recently. Of course. Uh, Reba here. Here is Reba and Donnie McGuire. Alright, so then the concert started. Uh, 
Reba and Donnie came up with Chip Taylor, who I believe, I can't remember which group, Alabama maybe he is sang with. Um, but they, they performed first and then, uh, uh, Mark Lowry performed and I don't really even have anything by Mark. I need to fix that. Um, there were some great moments in his performance, particularly, uh, particularly sweet, uh, moment came, uh, I believe he sang The Very Thought of You to, uh, to an elderly woman who was there, and I, I think that song had meant something to her, and, and so it was just a very nice moment. I, I know I'm not doing it justice, I'm, I'm, telling this very terribly right now but um, then Russ uh, came up and, and did his section of the uh, concert had some very great moments in it him talking about his wife and then uh, he sang one of the songs he sang um, which I shouldn't have have made notes. Um, very good news, maybe. It was a song that he had did, did when, when he was in the uh, Gaither Vocal Band. Um, and it, it's, it was a sweet song about um, about knowing what's important in life. And uh, when he was singing it, both of his, his girls were on each side of them, and, and um, it was just a, it was a really nice moment. Uh, there was another uh, some other cool moments. I, I let me back up, back up just a second because one of the great people I met. <laughs> this weekend and I can't think of what her first name is but Larry Hall was there and he was keyboardist for us back in the day and his wife I'm blanking on her name uh, what a sweetheart she <laughs> she was just I don't know well, one, she, she's clearly an extrovert, <laughs> but she just has a way of, of um, engaging people that just, you just can't help but want to be around a person like her, and, um, and I wish I, I could remember her name, uh, but uh, yeah, just, just had a wonderful spirit about her, and um so there was a, there was a kind of a, <laughs> kind of a cool moment where, 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 uh, all joined hands saying, we will stand. And I had to think about how great it is to, to just mix the mix of people. And I had her on, on, uh, one side of me holding my hand and I was holding hands with Reba Rambo, um, as we sang the song and um, I guess that's part of what I like about uh, you know a gospel music retreat like that is that that, um, that at, at the core of it we're all just brothers and sisters um, so great concert got one little bit of unfinished business and then I will end this video so what about the uh, what about that uh, silent auction that what I was looking at if I talked about in the previous video 
um, there was a silent auction being held for an album that um, was, was from early in Russ's career. Called, the group was called Sounds of Joy. It was before he even joined the Imperials. And um, a rare, rare album coming out of his storage locker. So you've got a rare album that belong to him, to Russ, that Russ and Tori pulled out of their storage locker, and, and, well, I mean, yeah, I wanted it, <laughs> but you know, um, sometimes in life, you win some, you lose some. But it sure is sweet on those occasions when you win some. And so I scored this. Uh, Russ said, you might be one of two people in this world that have a copy. I, I have not ever, I didn't know this album existed. There is another album. There is another album from Sands of Joy that is just, the title is YW, it's YWHW, and that was the old way that they spelled Yahweh, because I think they, his name was so great, it, they didn't even want to speak it back in those days, so it was YHWH, what we would now know as Yahweh. And so that was that's the name of that album, and it was done by Sounds of Joy. Um, this one I'd never I'd never heard of. Now here's the other cool part, if you can see in there, it's autographed to me from Russ Taff, and that's pretty cool. So Russ Taff, my favorite musician. Rare album from his catalog, from his personal collection, and autographed. That, that's that's pretty cool stuff. Let's see. Uh, I believe this is Russ right here. Now this album has got some psych influence to it. I'll show you the label. It's a pretty generic label. But, um, yeah, it, sound, it sounds like early 70s music. And um, the, the lyrics are a little bit simplistic. Uh, they just don't quite, you know, when I listen to Sounds of Joy versus Imperials, the Imperial songs are a little better crafted, I think. But I was surprised at how good the playing was, the band really played well and, and of course Russ sound, sounds great and so I was very pleased to get that so uh, you know I'll, I'll end with this um, there was a moment in the concert where Russ talked about After I had given him the letter and and talked about my mom, that I don't know if Russ had planned the things they said that day ahead of time, or I don't know if he read the letter before he performed. But he talked about his own mother and when she passed, and and how she had had some. I'm wanting to say dementia was was part of the problem and, and Russ said that he was so glad because because when he left uh, <clears throat> God had given uh, there was a moment of clarity and she recognized Russ and it wasn't last long 
but she, there was a moment of clarity and, and Russ said he was so glad that, that he got, even if it was for a few seconds, got to talk to his mom. And, um, you know, I'm not one to, to talk a lot about, um, God did this and God did that because I, I would be afraid to assign something to God that maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm explaining that well or not, but so, but it took me back to the night that my mom passed and he had talked to earlier about, you know who your friends are. You know, times like that, when you hit the wall, you find out who your friends are, and you also, but you also find out who Jesus is, and I think I found out a little bit of both at that point, because, you know, it, I didn't have to go through that alone. There were some great friends that, that sat in that room. That afternoon, when my mom was taken off the ventilator, and we sat and waited for her to take her last breath. Yeah, you find out who your friends are. And what I looked around and saw in the room were, were actually more than friends. They were family given to me by God. And they were all there. Out of that commitment. And um, then um, one thing I won't ever forget is after after she uh, after she drew her last breath, we prayed. We left to uh, go get in the car. Actually, we several cars. We were we were going to meet up somewhere and just sit for a while. But it was raining that night. And I mean, it was pouring. Now I don't necessarily believe God made it rain just for me. That would be kind of narcissistic on my part, but I think maybe maybe he might have let that moment happen at that, that time. And maybe so that the, the heavens would be opened up right as I was walking out and know that know that heaven wept with me. But uh, if you read the word, it does talk about uh, when he went back and found Lazarus had passed, that, that he wept. So, like I said, it's been a tough year, but uh, but uh, God's good, and God gets me through it, so... I don't mean to, I hope this video isn't being taken as me just preaching. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just talking about my experience. And uh, right now, you know, that's dealing a lot with God and eternity and, and uh, life and death and all those things. And uh, so, if I've rambled long enough, uh, didn't mean to end this video on this note because it was a good weekend. I mean, it was a great weekend. I plan on going back next year. And, um, yeah, I just, <laughs> it, you know, but I needed to deal with this stuff and, and being able to deal with it in a loving environment with friends that care 
And you can't ask for any more than that. And uh, so I hope, I guess my hope would be that anybody watching these videos, that uh, if you are going through, if you've hit that wall, you don't have to go through it alone. There, there are Christian people out there that'll that'll walk walk it with you, and uh, you just need to make sure you're you're uh, in their company. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, I'm glad you all have stuck stuck it out with me while I got through this. I hope to be posting videos a little more often. I don't know why my energy has been so low lately, but uh, maybe it's because I'm working so hard. But I uh, hope you're doing well, and um, I'll be talking to you soon. Good night.